Hi, I'm Dr. Swati Kumari Pandey. I'm a gynecologist and an infertility specialist. And today I wanted to talk about intrauterine insemination. I'm under the impression that a lot of people are confused about this process and why it's done. I get a lot of couples that come to me and say that they're not able to conceive for a certain duration of time and that now they should be going for an IUI. And it gave me the impression that people seem to think that it's some kind of a fertility booster, which it's not. So I wanted to make this video to make people understand why an IUI is done and what an IUI is. Okay, so there are four basic indications of an IUI. The first two are quite self-explanatory. First one is if you want to be a single parent and second is if you're in a same-sex couple. In this scenario, you need uh, artificial insemination and what better way than an IUI? The third indication, which is very important, is oligospermia. WHO says that the normal sperm parameter should be that a person should have 15 million count, 40% motility, and 4% normal forms. If these parameters are met, the chances of natural conception are high, but in case they're not met, then a procedure called IUI can be done. Okay, so for IUI, you need at least 5 million sperms, and better if it's more than 10 million. Now, what's the concept of this? Okay. So for a natural pregnancy, okay, uh, sperms are deposited into the vagina and the concentration of sperms that actually reach the uterus are far less than that which is deposited in the vagina. And from the uterus, only few sperms reach the fallopian tube and only one fertilizes the egg. This is the natural process. In case you have oligospermia or less number of sperms, Already a less amount of sperm is deposited in the vagina, even less will reach the uterine cavity and maybe none will find the egg. So in this scenario, by doing the process of intrauterine uh, insemination, we try to process the sperm and then inject it directly into the uterine cavity so a higher concentration of sperm is present in the uterine cavity and there's more chance of it going into the fallopian tube and finding, and finding the egg and causing fertilization. This is the basic principle of IUI. Now, the last indication is if you have cervical antibodies. In case of cervical antibodies, the sperms that are deposited in vagina, even if the concentration is good over there, antibodies present in the cervix of the female partner may kill these sperms and a less quantity may reach the uterine cavity. In this scenario, if you uh, inseminate via a catheter, then you bypass the cervix and you avoid this problem. So, these are the basic four indications of IUI and by doing the process of IUI, we try to increase the uh, fertility of a person who suffers from these problems to that of a couple who's, who has no problems. So at most, it can give you the success rate of a normal cycle, which is around 25%. It, does, it is not a fertility booster. It does not give you any added benefits if your semen parameters are normal or if you do not have cervical antibodies. I've attached a further segment to this video for better understanding of this procedure. Thank you. I'd like to explain the process of IUI further by this model. The female reproductive tract consists of the uterus, two fallopian tubes, and two ovaries. The first step in IUI involves the preparation of the woman so that she ovulates from anywhere between 12 to 16 days of the menstrual cycle. At the time of ovulation, an egg is released from the ovary, which is picked up by the fallopian tube, and it lies in the ampulla of the fallopian tube for around 24 hours. Once ovulation is confirmed, sperm is collected and processed. 0.3 to 0.5 ml is then loaded onto a syringe and then connected to an IUI catheter. As you can see, this is an IUI catheter connected to a syringe. It's very thin and is designed so that it can pass through the cervix without causing any pain. The woman is placed in lithotomy position. A speculum is placed. Now, as can be seen above, an IUI catheter is then gradually passed through the vagina, through the cervix, and into the uterine cavity. I personally prefer to do this procedure under ultrasound guidance, but it's not necessary that you do so. The sample is then injected 1.5 cm above the cervix, as can be seen in this uh, video. By doing so, we ensure that a good quantity of sperms have actually reached the uterine cavity, and hence fertilization of the ovum, which is in the 
fallopian tube is more likely. Then the catheter is gradually withdrawn through the cervix and out of the vagina. Now these sperm should move through the fallopian tube and just like the natural process, find the ovum and fertilize it. Only one sperm can fertilize one ovum. The distance between the sperms and the egg is far less now than as compared to how it would have been had it been deposited in the vagina. This is the basic principle of IUI, to decrease the amount of distance that the sperm has to travel to find the egg. In this segment of the video, I'm just pointing out the differences in the distance. And finally, the last step involves doing a pregnancy test after two weeks.